Hey guys, Dawn here. So uh, today I want to talk about the Hoof Boss. It's an electric hoof knife. I wanted to make this video because a lot of people are curious about it and there doesn't seem to be a lot of videos out on it right now. So um, I figured I'd throw one out there. Um, this, <laughs> the first thing people are going to think when they think an electric hoof knife is, oh my gosh, you shouldn't use power tools around horses. It's too dangerous. Um, you're going to take off way too much hoof and you know, all of these doubts and uh, misgivings about it. And, you know, yeah, a lot of that is valid, but let's just take a step back and assume for a minute that there is a, there's a proper way to use tools and there's improper way to use tools. And if you use a tool, any tool, in an improper manner, it's going to be bad. There are plenty of people that are butchering hooves with just a knife and a rasp and nippers. <laughs> um, I, I've even heard people tell um, uh, newbies to get cheap nippers, not good nippers at first because you can do a lot of damage with good nippers. And I, I don't know. I think I'd rather you get good tools good proper tools, sharp knives. Yeah, you're gonna probably cut yourself more with a sharp knife, but a dull knife is even more dangerous. You gotta use the right tools, but even more importantly, you, ha you have to develop the skills to use it properly. So that's gonna be my biggest thing about that, okay? Every tool has a place in the toolbox. It's just something that you can use. You can use it a little bit, you can use it a lot. A lot of these people, um, they think immediately to, to oh, um, so I'm go it's gonna be able to make me replace my, my knives and my nippers and my rasps and all that stuff. Maybe not. I certainly am not using this as a replacement for all of my other tools. I am, I just want it in my toolbox as an addition to. So does this actually offer anything that my other tools don't? And the answer is yes, it does. And so because of that, um, I believe that that makes it worthy to have in my toolbox. Um, but I, I'm still going to trim the same way I always trim, very carefully, very conservatively and stuff. Um, I'm just going to have this uh, uh, to help me along. And yeah, you can do everything with this. So if you wanted to, you can trim a whole hoof with just this. Or what I would do is I'm still using all my other tools, but this is going to help because I have a broken, broken back. So it's going to help um, help with my back a little bit. It's going to be a little bit easier and it's going to save me some time. It's going to save me a lot of effort and um, manpower. Um, instead of every stroke of the RAS, I can save that and just do strokes with this. Um, and especially when you know, you're know you working on multiple horses in this kind of heat, it's been over 100 degrees for, I don't know, months now, I think. And it's like, it's hard work. You ever see farriers' hands? You know, the guys that have been doing this for ages. Look at their hands. They are beat up. I don't think any farrier can argue that. This is hard work. This, this is definitely a workout. So anything that can make it easier, hey I'm all for it um, but yes care needs to be taken so what is this tool it's called an electric hoof knife and basically um, uh, it's just a manner to shave down the hoof okay so you can you can cut it with the nippers you can slice it with your knives you can rasp it with your rasp um, shave it away you can use um, a dremel you can use, this is my most favorite Dremel tool. I'm not sure if this is pick, picking this up. Uh, but this is the attachment that I like with my Dremel. And I got two batteries. It's uh, battery powered. So I do fine, um, fine work with this, you know, getting into tight spots and stuff. Love this thing. Um, this one is the Hoof Boss. And it is a little bit bigger. Oh my goodness, my camera does not want to focus. It's a little bit bigger, but it's basically the same thing. You're going to shave away. So this is a chainsaw attachment, and then they have a whole variety of discs, right? This is another attachment. 
sorry guys my camera really doesn't like to refocus so this is their other attachment so the kit that i bought was the um equestrian kit um so they have an equestrian kit or horse kit they these you can use for pigs goats elephants anything with the hoof right so they have all these different kits and basically the difference in the kits is the type of disc that it uses and then you can get a complete kit for 370 ish dollars with a ton of discs or um, i just got the basic horse kit which is the chainsaw disc and this uh red disc all right so this thing is about, it's a little bit under 11 inches long. And here it is. Make sure that you have a nice grounded outdoor extension cord to go with it. This cord that it comes with isn't going to be long enough for you to, um, for you to trim up by by itself so you're gonna need that you're gonna flip up this toggle switch and then you have this paddle so the paddle the, the paddle is gonna make it so that you can just hold it um, anywhere along here and keep it on this button here is to lock it while you use the hex uh the allen key to take out that screw in there and that's how you change out the attachments all right uh so you don't want to push this button while you are holding <clears throat> which makes me kind of wish that this button was somewhere else because this button does kind of stick out a little bit um so it's kind of in the way you know and then like andy Andy put his hands on it and when he holds it he's able to hold all the way up here so to get like you know superior control and grip and control and his fingers still hold this down but as you can see my hands can't do that but actually I've been playing around with it and I'm getting better and better at it and then another thing is I've been playing around with um, making an, a, a little piece over here that extends. So all it has to do is extend down. You don't want it touching the button. So extend down below there and just give it a little bit extra extension so that I can hold it uh, a little bit closer to the head. When you use this, you want to make sure that you're at a, a 45 degree angle. You don't want to be perpendicular. If you are perpendicular to it, it will chop. If you are familiar with chainsaw, ever using a chainsaw, it will grab if you do it at a certain angle. But if you lightly stroke with it, you are able to get very precise, very precise uh, shavings out of it. You can get very thin, very light shavings, thicker shavings, even thicker shavings, starting to get chips and then big chips. So it all depends on the angle and the amount of force that you put on it. As with everything else, you want to let this, uh, this actually only revolves at 11,000 RPM. So it's not even that, uh, that much of an RPM, but uh, you want to let this do its work. You never want to force anything. You don't force a knife. You don't force this tool. You force it, you're going to dig in. You're going to start it running before you apply it onto the thing and stuff like that. So, um, oh, and then you can, there's a little nut thingy over there. So you can unscrew this and this guard, you can move this guard wherever you want. So like, if I didn't like it there, I can turn it. I can, you know, turn it wherever. Um, I'm not sure if you can remove it, but if you could, it would be highly not recommended to remove that. So, uh, okay, so that covers it. There's a ton of different discs so that you're as aggressive or as conservative as you want. This chainsaw disc is the most efficient at removing um, a hoof, right? But if you use a finer disc, you can use that as a training thing. It's safer, um, you know, maybe does less damage. You take off a lot less hoof. It's only capable of removing less hoof. So you can use that to help you train. And these discs are expensive. I think this is like 35 
around $35 for replacement chain disc. But the chain disc should last you, I think they, I don't remember, like 500 or plus horses. Um, and then each of these discs are like 40 some, 40 plus dollars. You'll have to look on there, but these are pricey. So there is that, but they last quite a while. Um, now, it might be weird to think of a chainsaw at, as being able to do precision work, but if you doubt me, go ahead and look up those people that use a chainsaw and carve intricate, beautiful carvings out of wood, all right? And they are using full-blown chainsaws. I'm talking about into logs, all right? So it can be done. You just have to train yourself. Yes, you take this, you put it into some buddy that's all willy-nilly and doesn't care and um, has no skills whatsoever and they say chop up that hoof yeah they're gonna butcher it they can butcher it bad with this but you take it you know to give it to someone who has had a lot of experience um, luckily for me I've worked with Dremels forever so I'm pretty familiar with these type of um, rotary tools oh so what is the difference between using a dremel and using this believe me i did not want to spend the money to um to get this but like i said i have uh, my broken back and it's been hot out and it, you know multiple horses working in this heat is just going to kill me so that's why i went ahead and splurged on this so the difference between the dremel and this i did try to see if the dremel could somehow make it so that I don't need this and there is no way because with the Dremel um, the cutting disc is going this way and you need to go at a 45 degree angle that means you would be holding your tool um, this way or this way it, it doesn't work so the the whole fact that this disc is this way uh, um, against your arm instead of this the blade being this way against your arm makes it so that you are able to tilt 45 degree angles because you can do this with your hand Do you see what I'm saying the disc is like this in order to get 45 degree angle to the hoof you'll have to hold your arm way up here you see what I'm saying like that okay so because of that and then angle grinders um, a lot of uh, trimmers are using angle grinders that's perfectly good as well um those are a larger disc so that can do a larger area at once um a lot harder to do precision work with that um will i ever add that to my toolbox i say no now but who knows i'm kind of a sucker for tools and just you know getting to know them and and exploiting all of their um specialties so let's see what else do i have to tell you uh the chainsaw is actually very easy to sharpen they do supply you with a sharpener a chainsaw sharpener it's just a skinny one and it's very easy to line it up and and they show you they have lots of videos they show you and also um there's a book and it comes with a dvd All right, okay so another big question that i get is um but won't it freak out the horse um Actually, as, as many horses as I've seen around these power tools, it doesn't freak them out. Uh, the reason behind it is uh, it's something completely new and they have not yet had any negative associations with this. The vibrations is minimal. Um, for this tool, heat is minimal to non-existent to very controllable because you're just doing little strokes it's not something that you're staying on the angle grinder if you keep that on that can generate quite a bit of heat so that is more of a concern of the angle grinder than this one if you're doing small steady strokes um, uh, it's and light strokes it's like a feather touch you want to use that the revolutions take advantage of it and just use light little feather strokes you know if you need to take a bigger bite that's when I'll have my second hand and then I'll you know very gently control and take a bigger bite out of it um, it doesn't it doesn't torque on the horse in fact I think one of the biggest torques um, on the hoof is probably when you go to take off a shoe and you got to wrench those nails out of the hoof that's really torquing on the horse this doesn't torque at all it might tickle it might have vibrations and stuff like that but even difficult horses um, 
I think kind of my specialty, really are not bothered by the Dremel and by um, by this, even though it is louder and it, it, it is clankier than the, than the Dremel. All right, so now I'm gonna hopefully show you how this works. Um, here's the chainsaw thingy, the chainsaw blade. It, this is the four, the four uh, teeth, four tooth. Um, and then they tell you, you know, how to proper, properly have it together. There's the, the rake and the, I can't remember what it's called now, but um, it goes like that. <laughs> and um, let's see, to sharpen it, you'll just fall, take that uh, sharpener, follow that line and go through. Oh, and you do get a nice um, little bag that comes with it. It's really thin and whatever, but it holds stuff so it's cool all right make sure that you have your safety goggles on um some people want a whole face mask you do get shavings everywhere you do control your shavings um like i said very light very little shavings you know harsher you get bigger chunks of shavings so um you control your shaving and also you control shavings by the direction that this is pointed at um will direct the shavings as well so uh those two i just use uh, regular goggles. These ones from Home Depot are my favorites, so I always carry those everywhere. Um, I don't use a whole face mask. Okay, so let's see. There's the button again. That's to lock. You hold this to lock while you unscrew, and then here's your paddle switch. You push, push this so that it can fall flat, and then your button is actually down there. So you have it like this. I try to kind of come up and then I also will sometimes use a second hand or whatever to direct. Uh, let me see, how can I do this? I'm trying to have it be point of view, but that means I'm gonna have to have my arms around the tripod. So excuse me if it gets bumped. Okay. So that's not scary. If you go vertically, you can take a big chunk out. You don't want to do that with a hook. So it looks like the guard is kind of blocking your view of the blade. Well, there are other videos that you can see as well. Let me see if I come this side. That'll show you. Let's see. Now I'm going in both directions and then maybe you saw how the, how the shavings flew. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how that works. And now I have uh, shavings on me everywhere, but um, it's not that big a deal to just wipe it off. It's not like you're completely covered head to toe and stuff like that. So um, 
bottom line, you saw how I was able to control it and you saw how big of a space it actually does. A Dremel with a cutting tool, it's very thin. It's, it's almost like um, a marker pen width, okay? Or, may, or yeah, a pen's width. So it's very, very thin. This is a bigger area, but the area that it works on is more like this. You can use it between the frogs and stuff like that. Um, what are the different uses for it? Uh, so say you just want something to help you out because it's really hot out or you have so many horses to do, um, or the hooves are super hard. Um, hooves are super hard. You can either soak them, you can torch them, uh, stuff like that to help soften them, or you can just have something like this. Usually the hardness is right at the surface. So even if you use this only to skim the top so that it's easier for you to then rasp and knife and whatever, um, and frogs, sometimes the, the frog, it's super hard, but it's only a thin layer that's super hard on top. You take off that crust with something like this to make it easier, then it's very easy to finish up with your knife and stuff. Um, they have the different discs, so you're supposed to, you know, uh, you can either switch out discs and get finer and finer and finer and finer or What I'm doing is I switch to my Dremel. My Dremel has that um, that attachment. It's pretty fine So I just do rough work with this I finish up with the Dremel and then I rasp um, on top of that over it um, This is just to take off the big chunks uh, a lot of the times you got uh, set up trims a lot of work at the beginning that's when this will be really helpful um, to, to, you know, and then all your maintenance trims after that, then Another you don't use for it is, especially when you're doing barefoot transition, there are stages where you have a ton of callus, sole callus come up. Sometimes it's lumpy or whatever like that. And you don't want to touch the wall because you already have the wall set at a certain height, but there's just a lump in the sole and you don't want to shave it all down and you don't want to take huge chunks out of the sole. Sometimes a huge callus, you can dig under the callus and pop out that whole entire callus. That is one way to deal with it, but the horse might not be ready for the whole entire callus to come off, but they would benefit from you shaving down lumps to um, and leaving the, the majority of the callus still there. You're just going to reduce the height of the callus where it's a lump, right? And that's where this is really nice because those calluses are usually very hard. <laughs> and um, I mean, the whole purpose of it is to be hard and protective. So this is able to just shave that down. Now, I was using my Dremel to use to do that type of stuff but um, once again the Dremel is at a, at a uh, more difficult angle to work with um, when I want a flat surface and it's a lot a smaller area so it takes me <clears throat> a lot longer to do it. Those are just different examples of situations where it would be really handy. It doesn't have to be something that you choose this and throw everything else in the trash. I like to think of it as a tool that you can have in addition to all of your other tools. Uh, price wise it's about $300 for the cheap kit that I got. Uh, so you you can choose $300 for this kit or the $370 for the uh, ultimate or complete kit or whatever that's called. Um, Price-wise, you can you get that covered in a few trims. So it's not that big a deal, especially when this is going to last you quite a while. And if you have medical issues like I do, then it really does make it a lot more worth it. Um, Right now, this only comes in a corded version, but they are looking to have a cordless version come out in the future. And I wish that I could get a cordless version, although sometimes that means that the battery is heavier. This is really light. It's actually like a, around a pound. I didn't weigh it, but I think they said it's about a, a pound. So it's very light, it's very easy to use. A battery version might be heavier, and then you have to worry about batteries and stuff like that. This one, you have to worry about extension cords, um, tying up the tail. You don't want any hair to get tangled up in it and stuff. So, um, so it'll be interesting to to see about the cordless version though so there you go um it's another tool and uh the next step up from this as far as uh, amount of um, coverage that takes off would be the angle grinder the angle grinder takes off more hoof and i know trimmers that are do using angle grinders almost solely and they're able to get the whole horse done in like 
um, 10 minutes they and all that that's not my type of trims but you know um, they they do really well with that, that style of trimming so that's an but once again even if I got the angle grinder I would just uh, tailor the use of that to you know fit my needs but um, this I think is a good buy uh, do you have to be careful with it uh, yes absolutely but uh, I think that's the case for any tool so there you go hope that was helpful and thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later bye guys